This is the brand new Google Pixel 5a, and I'm actually pretty excited to jump into this. I am not very familiar with Android. I have a history with it, but it's been a rocky relationship. And those who have followed my content or my experience with tech and accessibility, I've primarily been an iOS, iPhone, Mac user. And that is just because of my consistent accessible experience as a legally blind user. So I'm gonna jump into the Google Pixel 5a and experience setting up this modern Android device with accessibility. Hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is James Rath. I'm a legally blind content creator, filmmaker, traveler, and a tech enthusiast. And I just like to share my experience living with vision loss, as well as um, sharing accessible experiences. Google didn't send me any kind of instructions. They didn't send me anything. It's, this is literally uh, a blind unboxing. There appears to be these tabs on the side, similar to some of Apple's packaging as of late, which is cool. Not saying Apple started it, I don't know, but you can just easily peel these off to make the unboxing experience a little bit more accessible, a little bit more seamless. All right, I'm actually unboxing it now. <laughs> there it is. All right, I actually like, I like the texture of the phone already. Like it feels, it's nice. It's, it's like a nice smooth texture. We'll get to the phone in a second. So you have a SIM injector, looks like SIM popper. Cool. Probably have more than enough of those lying around. But you never have them when you need them. What else is in here? Just instructions. All right, well, I can't see or read. Now, I was told they give you an 18 watt fast charger. So that's pretty cool. Apparently it didn't come with one before, the Pixel 4a. Again, I never used one, never unboxed one, so I'm not positive on that. What else is in here? This this is the charger. Okay, cool. So we have a USB-C to USB-C charger and there's some kind of adapter. So it's a regular USB adapter. If you need to plug it into a computer, maybe sync data or just charge it probably with a standard cord. So that's good to know. All right. Is there anything else in here? I don't think so. I think that's, no, I'm kind of just tearing the box apart. I think that's it. You definitely have like a fingerprint sensor here on the back. Don't necessarily see that all the time on uh, Apple phones these days. Though the iPhone SE, which is in a similar price bracket, and I actually went over the SE last year around that launch. But pop off that screen, packaging. And there it is, it's a full display. And I believe the camera is in the upper right, hand, left hand corner, it's, it's my left the right though from the phone facing outwards like that. <laughs> okay, so my first impressions, I actually, I like this. So the phone actually has a texture on the button right here. I'm assuming that's the power button, the sleep wake button. I'll find out in a moment. Uh, it's easy to find. I like that it has this sort of like rugged texture compared to the other buttons, which it only seems to have, is that just volume control? Yeah, it just has a volume rocker underneath. Okay, cool. And camera on the back. Now I know the Google Pixel phones are known for their excellent cameras, great photography. So I'm holding down this side button. Oh, we're on. Okay, cool. So it's, it's powering up. And so this is where I'm already going to be a little bit lost until I know that there's some accessibility features. So my history real quick with Android is my first smartphone was actually an Android device. It was a Samsung Galaxy S, like the original Galaxy. Uh, it was the Fascinate. And, okay, I got some kind of animation here. Off the bat, I know if you triple click the side button, that turns on voiceover on the iPhone. Let's see if that turns on talkback. One, two, three. No. I'm wondering if there's a way to turn on talkback, like right from the beginning. I don't want to emergency call anyone. Okay. You can turn talk back on from the beginning. Sweet. I just looked it up, Google support had it covered. And all you have to do apparently is hold the volume up and down three seconds long. So if I hold it, one, two, three. Press and hold both volume keys for three seconds to use talk back. Cool. We've got talk back up and running. Talk back on. Talk okay. back is a screen reader primarily for people with blindness and low vision. 
that allows interaction with the device using spoken feedback. Top back tutorial. Lesson 1, basic navigation. Learn lesson 1, button. Practice lesson 1, button. Lesson 2, scrolling. Scro learn lesson 2, button. I like the haptics Double on this phone. To activate. It feels good. Practice lesson 2, button. So what I'm going to do though is just proceed. Now, I'm programmed to know voiceover on iPhone, not TalkBack, but... Lesson one, basic navigation, TalkBack... So it seems pretty similar to voiceover. There are probably some key differences I'm going to learn eventually, especially with the operating system being a bit different, obviously, from iOS. I have it on, which I feel good about. There's no rotor. Display size, navigate up, not check, portrait. Okay, so I'm going to probably want my screen size to be as large as it can be. So I'm going to go with that. Go back. So the way it works is you can skim your finger across the display, either left or right, to get to the next uh, option. And the talkback cursor will head there. Um, and you can double tap to select an item. Select to speak text. Display size. Make font size. Make text. Vision okay. settings. In Fonts. Display size. Select to speak. So select to speak is actually a feature I went over in my switching to Android for a week video a few years back. And back then I was using the Essential phone. That was just what I could budget for at the time. Uh, a lot of people gave me flack, by the way, for not using like the best or premier Android phone. But honestly, the Essential phone did what I needed it to do. It was a vanilla Android device that was good. I was just covering some accessibility features. There were some people in the comments that were just really upset that I didn't use like a highest end Android device. It's like that's not what it was about. So select to speak. I'm a big fan of it. Again, being legally blind, I have a little bit of usable vision here and there. But at this time, I'm gonna stick with Talkback to get through the whole menu with um, just a screen reader. That's what I have been using about part time when I'm using a mobile device. So I'm gonna stick to it. Magnification though is definitely one that is important to me. I've always been married to Apple's Zoom. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but I've always loved Apple's Zoom. Uh, and I've had a hard time using magnifier on uh, Windows or even the magnification in the past on Android. It's never been as usable or uh, as easy to use for me. I know some other people have had different experiences with it and that's fine, that's cool. And maybe it's improved, not sure. Controls. Let's go back though. Vision settings, magnification. It is a top one. Magnification, magnification. Options, heading, magnification, shortcut, off, short. We'll turn this on. Use gesture to open. To use this feature, swipe up from the bottom of the screen with three fingers. I do use magnification quite often, especially when using a mobile device. But for now, let's go back. Hi there. Language, English, United States button. Start button. Double tap to activate. Connect to mobile network. Okay, so we're just getting connected onto the Wi-Fi network and everything, but so far, TalkBack feels pretty familiar to what I know on VoiceOver on the iPhone. There are some little differences, such as uh, switching modes or um, choosing what it is that you're navigating over, such as uh, characters or choosing containers or lines or links. Um, so that's fine. I'm kind of figuring out the difference now. And, you know, instead of scrolling with um, three Android fingers. Android setup, just a sec. Android setup, just a sec, just a sec. Data transfer, available or in progress. Don't copy button, double tap to activate. Copy absent data. You scroll with two fingers <laughs> instead of three, like on iOS. Anyway, I, no, I don't need to copy any data. Hi, James. So when you scroll, it gives you, um, sound indication of how much you've been scrolling or how much is left on the page. Collapsed, install updates and apps by continuing. Sure, yeah. Hidden, use your fingerprint to unlock your phone or approve purchases. So Note, your fingerprint may be less secure than a strong pattern or pin. If Touch the sensor, it's on the back of your phone. Use your index finger. Lift then touch again. Put your finger on the sensor and lift after you feel a vibration. Android setup, just a sec. Google, Google Assistant logo, voice match enrollment, to train your assistant to start. Say the phrase starting with okay. Okay. 
I don't know what, say the phrase starting, okay, Google. Okay, say the phrase starting with okay. I, I don't know what it wants me to say. Okay, check the weather, but we'll come back to that later. Anything I, else? Set up a few, add another email account, identify music around you, get more tips at the next button. For support updates and more, go to settings greater than support. Next, completing setup, Google Play. Getting your phone ready. This may take a few minutes. Completing setup, Google Play. Completing setup, installed zero out of eight applications. Save, save battery with dark theme. Yeah, Next I would button. like to use a dark Double theme. Double tap, go home. Introduction to navigation gestures. Swipe up from the bottom of your screen. This gesture always takes you to the home screen. Next, switch apps. How come I can't? <laughs> I don't know what to do. This is like weird. So I can't swipe up. Am there. I missing something? You're ready to start using this, your phone. This is what you I get for not doing the tutorial. Navigation and use buttons to go back. Radio button. Net. Home screen one of one. Welcome to your new pixel. I don't know double how I got here. Double tap to activate, double tap and hold to long press. I don't know how I got here. I mean, I'm glad I'm here, but I... So cool, I'm in the home uh, of the Google Pixel. That was... Setup complete, installed eight out of eight applications. Double Let's tap check out to the activate, camera. double tap. Switch to video cam, selected cam, switch to portrait mode. Switch to port, tap to focus. Switch to front. Okay. One face, bottom I'm gonna... center, with 20% of screen. I'm going One to face. attempt my first Center. selfie with here. Thirty percent of screen, good for selfie. Center with fifty percent of screen, very close. <laughs> so okay, that's kind of cool. One it face. gives Center. you with fifty percent a heads up if you're very too close. close to the screen. <laughs> One face. Center with fifty percent of screen, very close. Zero faces. To the point where it can't recognize. One my face. face left right. with forty percent of screen. Let's take a photo. Good for selfie, take portrait button. One face, center, with 30% of screen. Good for selfie, photo taken. So overall, I like how wide the camera is. You got a good wide camera, both in portrait and landscape. I'm gonna do a quick video test though. So this is a video test from the Google Pixel A5, 5A. So this is a quick backwards facing camera test on the Google Pixel 5A. So overall, I've got to say the Google Pixel 5a has been a pretty pleasant experience. Talkback definitely has a little bit of a learning curve like voiceover would, but coming from one to the other, I definitely am getting a little confused on some gestures and I need to thoroughly go through the Talkback tutorial. But overall, uh, I'm liking it. It's fast. It's, it's a clean experience. That's the one thing with Android I'm not always crazy about is the amount of stuff that you get sometimes from third-party manufacturers and that's fine some create some really cool apps but when you get that vanilla google experience i think that's sort of android at its core what its vision is meant to be and i know there's a lot of accessibility that's baked into this operating system in its core and then some third parties like samsung and oneplus incorporate their own accessibility features comes down to your preference and I'm excited to kind of get to know this phone a little bit better, get to know Android's current state a little bit better. And overall, uh, it's nice to have a phone with a headphone jack again. You don't really get that very often on anyone's phone. So the Google Pixel 5a, it starts at $449 here in the United States and you can order it through Google's online store. I'm curious though, and I'd like to hear from you, what do you think of these mid-range phones, phones that are coming out that are sort of semi-flagship, they tend to pack similar specs in terms of power or the camera is similar to what you'd find on a thousand dollar phone, but sometimes they lack the little features like wireless charging, water resistance, although this phone does have some water resistance. But with a headphone jack, with a fingerprint sensor and a reliable camera and a nice display and a larger battery from its uh, predecessor from last year. I gotta say like this for $449, if you're looking for a Android alternative, something that is affordable but reliable and you know will be supported for hopefully years to come because it's Google's 
device, this is probably one of the best phones you can get for a mid-tier price. I'll be using this probably more for referencing Android or uh, diving a little bit deeper into like Android's accessibility, updates and settings. One thing I am excited about with this phone is the camera. As someone who likes to travel a lot and wants to have the most accessible camera right there in my pocket, although a camera like my Sony ZV-1 would be great for that, smartphones are also sometimes better for that. It just comes down to what is the most accessible phone that you have, or sorry, camera. Oftentimes it is the phone though. I might might use this on some upcoming travels. I hope you could see different today, uh, if, especially if you've been on the channel for a while and you've seen a lot of Apple related videos. Um, this is definitely seeing something different from me. And uh, I will um, hear you next time. Bye.